thank you so much for logging on to essaytalktoday.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, you are watching us on our Silver Fox Multimedia Studio channel. And if you are logged on to our Facebook fan page, hello and welcome. I am super duper, uber, uber excited to have an amazing, amazing man here sitting next to me, Mr. Dan Jolly. He is the owner of the Cook Soul Wine Studio right here in beautiful Leon Valley. So thank you for coming over, my name. Neighbor. Yay! <laughs> so I love that you have a studio here so close to me. You know I have a six-year-old. Yes, ma'am. And I know you work with children. Tell yes, me about that. Oh, working with children is interesting. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's painful. <laughs> <laughs> but it helps you as a person. Mm -hmm. If you want to get to know yourself more, work with a child. Really? Yeah, because children are honest. Very. <laughs> I, uh, I had an interesting thing happen in my studio one time because I, I, I taught the kids and I had this set curriculum and everything. So I had one of my assistant instructors, uh, Eddie Charles, going. So he took over for me. So I was in the office doing paperwork and then the young lady, one of the students, I'll never forget it, uh, Haley, she's getting ready to go to Black Belt. She's fourth generation student. Wow. You know, from the Medina. So she knocks on the door and she says, uh, Mr. Jolly, uh, uh, Mr. Charles is not doing the curriculum right. The curriculum. <laughs> what? You, curriculum? Yeah, the curriculum. He's not following the procedures that you set down how we're supposed to do that. He's doing it all wrong. Oh. So I'm like, <laughs> and, all, and all the other kids are like, yeah, he's doing it all wrong. I'm oh. like, <laughs> so I'm like, Eddie, 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 Eddie. <laughs> you gotta do it how. And then you can add your, because they're used to, but kids, you know, you know, kids will pick up on things. They, they know that we're supposed to be doing this and now you're doing that. That's not how that goes. Uh, exactly. <laughs> right. And kids do like routine because it yeah. makes them feel safe, right? Yeah, yes. Kids like to have some sort of structure. I noticed that in me dealing with kids that I see a lot of times individuals that I have helter-skelter structures seem to have helter-skelter kids ah. and and then once we get them into that set routine i've had kids cry because they they could not be here at a certain time or they were late and the parents like they actually yelled i'm like hey you know i think that's good because now they're really they're developing a sense of structure being on time this is what you want Yes, definitely. Yes. That's what we want. It's responsible citizens of the world. world. Yes. <laughs> I love when someone's on time. Of course, yes. things happen. Things happen. But when it's a routine, they feel safe they and feel they know safe. what to expect. expect. Yes. And so you work with them as young as four. Yes, four. All the way up to? 70. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, I used to be a personal trainer and my oldest client was mm -hmm. 83. And you just got to keep them moving. It's move it or lose it. Yes. But I'm sure your students keep the routines from yeah. when they first start. Tell me yes. about that. Oh, yes, we have testing every every uh, three months. And even the black belts test in my school because, you know, they go to degrees. Mm. So to keep them on top of their game, they have to test too. Or I'll do a continuation training that Saturday. I'll have black belts in there like all day going over things. So when you test, you not only test on the new stuff, but you test on what you learned before. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a continuous foundation. In I practice. love that. It's almost like continuing education. Yeah, basically, that's what <laughs> it is. It's a continuing education. And it's in the Kuksul Wan Kuksul form. Wan. So tell me the difference between Kuksul Wan and other forms that well, you've done before. Um, Kuksul Wan is a very intricate system. It's a systematic study of uh, martial arts that was practiced throughout Korean history. Uh, Grandmaster categorized and cataloged numerous, numerous techniques that were practiced. Tremendous, man. As far back, how far back are we talking about we're here? We're talking about, oh God, I wish I could just say during the Koryo Kingdom period, which is back in the AD, uh -huh. and some techniques from BC. Really? Yes, and so he went around to various teachers and, and, and then he put a system together. As a matter of fact, this year we're going to a tournament to commemorate his f over 40 years here in the United States. Wow. Yeah, and 
Crook Suwan is probably recognized as the fastest growing, extremely most organized martial art in the world. A man has tremendous vision and has tremendous people working with him. So it could help me, who's not a young one, yes, I with have, my organization skills. Oh, I, I do. I, I help people with a lot of things. I just don't teach martial arts. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're failing your test? Come in the office. Because I was in the service 30 years. Almost 30 years. Wow. So I'm like, oh, you're failing your test? Well, let me see here. You study this, study this, study this. Do it like this, do it like this. Then I want you to do it like this. And then, and then look at me. Okay, just do it like that. Because I was a uh, master instructor in the military and things of that nature, so I uh, I taught uh, anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, mm -hmm. and uh, orthotic field. So I've been teaching like most of my days. I was the oldest of my family, and I was teaching my brothers too, and we all worked together. You were just born to be a teacher. I think so. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's always I mean, worked out so it's far. It's, it's worked worked out, out really yeah. well so far. Yeah. Tell me, how old were you when you got into it? I started uh, seriously training at the age of 12, 13. Okay. I, but I've been fooling around 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, friends just fooling around. Then finally I joined a formalized school. I, uh, I got a real taste of formalization from my Albert Pearsall. I end up joining a formalized program through God uh, Rest His Soul, Kenny Mathis, who's really, really like a big brother to me. He took me to uh, a guy that's been like a father to me. He comes down every year. He didn't come this year because we were pretty busy with a lot of things, but he comes down every year, uh, Ma Grandmaster Albert Cheeks, who, uh -huh. who, who is now the Grandmaster of the uh, Kiwan, Kiwan Kim system, who was, our, who was the teacher. Master Kim, Grandmaster Kim. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so as you evolved in it, then you went into the service. Yes. And you started teaching others. Well, I went into the service. Uh, I didn't really start teaching others. I worked with people, but I was mostly competing. Oh. I had no interest whatsoever of teaching people. Really? I, I got asked a thousand times, but I had no, no interest whatsoever. So I ended up, you know, meeting some tremendous people while I was in the service. Uh, 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 we have a guy here by the name of Zip White, uh, awesome individual, you know, when we met each other in the service, he, you know, he had a school going. Matter of fact, at Lackland in the 70s, and kind of took me under his wing. We had another guy named uh, Anthony Linson, kind of took me under his wing. And then as I went on, I got with Emmanuel Arcos. He's right here on the south side, Master Arcos. He taught me uh, Kaji Kempo. And, uh, and what's that? And that's a uh, martial art that originated out of Hawaii. That was a mixture of karate, judo, kempo, and uh, he. That was a rough and tumble class. <laughs> I was in Ta I was in Taekwondo. And I came in and it was like, okay, you're just. I'd like to join your school, and it it was like step out on the floor. Let's see what you got. And I, and I got to meet some, some. He took me down on the south side, like early on in the '70s. He took me down there. And those people just kind of adopted me, Odie Molina, and you know, they're still existing. They're still around today. I, I, I had them there. As a matter of fact, I had Master Arcos there uh, a year and a half ago, honoring him for teaching me. Aww. And then I had a so I had a lot of good experiences. Uh, even I uh, in the Philippines, I, I met an old Chinese gentleman just because I swept out his his little restaurant. He taught me Hungar Kung Fu. I ended up getting a black belt in that. Wow. But he, I didn't know he was a Hungar master. He tortured me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I was uh, doing, I still, when I went to the Philippines from California, my teacher who introduced me to Kuk Su Wan was a master, Larry White. Well, he, I, I, he's now a master in something else. He's no longer at Kuk Su, but he started me at Kuk Su. Hmm. And uh, introduced me, and that's when I went on to meet, you know, Grandmaster, and I've developed some tremendous relationships. I, I uh, admire and respect his sons. Uh, 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 now it's going to be Sisa Kwanjanim, which means, you know, senior master, uh, Sun Jin So on the ninth degree. Then uh, Sun and Kwanjanim, because we have different titles. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a master, Alex. He's really, 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 really pushes hard for the standardization and you know paperwork and all the stuff that's involved with Cook to make it run. Mm -hmm. And then Master Harmon, Master Barry Harmon, 
who was the first master ever in promoted to master in Cook Swan, him and his wife, and his wife are the highest ranking individual. She's the highest ranking lady. And they're she, in Houston? They're in Houston. Wow. They're in Houston. She even has a book there, you know, uh, that's, that's really awesome. She wrote a book about her life and training in martial arts, so I read that book like a thousand times. Oh, how inspiring. Yeah. So oh, what yeah. changed for you from going from competing to teaching? What? Well, let me tell you how that came about. <laughs> I ended up coming from the Philippines to Ch Chief Master in Jusso, who is now a hedging, hedging master, which is executive master, and he's over the Kuksu, you know, organization in Korea. So he was an interesting man. <laughs> he uh, he uh, took me under his wing. He would explain to me a lot of things. You know, he used to tell me stuff like, you know, Easy give, easy gone. Hmm. Easy give, easy gone. So in, in a sense, he was like, it doesn't matter if they're your family members. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Then he said, just because this person kicks the highest and has all this talent doesn't mean that they're going to be the best person. Huh. Usually people who have to work the hardest and stumble around and kind of fight their way through end up being the best martial arts. So you keep... A lot of people have a habit when they see the superstar person, they want to pour all this into them and don't think about the other person. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't turn out how they think. So that's where that expression, easy give, easy gone. That is so interesting. <laughs> I've never heard it, but I have seen it in real life Less where people easy. didn't have to try as hard. They just didn't appreciate didn't it. Didn't appreciate it. And that's mm -hmm. it. So you also work with young girls, preteens and oh, boys. Oh, yes. Obviously. I. Uh, and how does martial arts help them? So, uh... We get into the self-respect, the self-esteem, carry yourself in a certain manner. You don't have to accept anything, you know. The, uh, I, I have these interesting conversations like, okay, if, I, if I'm walking in the restaurant and I see you sitting there and the guy's hat is backwards and his underwear is showing, why are you sitting there with him? Mm -hmm. Oh, if he can't open the door for you, why are you going out with him? If he can't come meet your parents, mm -hmm. I say, there is an issue here. And I said, that's the same with young ladies. If, you're, if you think fighting and hitting each other and her cursing you out. So I have all these intricate conversations mm -hmm. with young ladies. And uh, I explain to them. And then I have to explain to some moms and stuff. You have to take a look because you're not looking at your little whatever. She's 17. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I was in a service, a 17-year-old. I've seen 17-year-old women fight for countries. Wow. And, you know, uh, have children. You know, you know, in charge all. So you have to take another look and step back and change your mode of conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. And then tell me about your flower analogy. Oh, that, that's with the kids. I, we, we have a, you know, for some odd reason, race is a tremendous issue in this country. Mm -hmm. And I've been, you know, I went through the race thing. Because sometimes if you call me on the phone and say, oh, I have a Korean, they'll see me. Oh, okay, that's Master John. <laughs> and, uh, or, you know, for a while when the other, you know, African-American masters left, I was the only African-American master, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I noticed that this country has a real issue. Hmm. So I have talked with the kids. I say, hey, you know, I notice in the flower field, they're, they're just flowers. You have lilies, you have tulips, you have roses, you have all these beautiful flowers that's different, but nobody ever kind of say, just look at the pretty flowers. And they're all different, but they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's I what you that. understand. I said, yeah, you might be this, you know, I might be Chinese American, and I might be black American, or I might be African American, or I might be Latino American, or but you're a different kind of flower and your individuality makes you beautiful. So you have to kind of, there's good and bad in everybody. Mm -hmm. So, or every race or whatever. So, you know, there's bad ones. And sometimes your own kind may not be your own person. Mm -hmm. So you have to look and realize all in all like beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I yeah. love that. So if you have a kid or a teenager who is giving you a little run for your money as well, far as patient-wise, you have to come and see. Well, I'm um, good with that. I, I'm known, uh, I, I'm name dropped on several occasions. Do you want me to discuss that with Mr. Johnny, yeah. how you're acting? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the big ones. No, 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 no. 
That's don't, okay. Don't tell Mr. Jolly. Because I'll okay. be asking him, come here, can I? Can I? And my, they know they're getting in trouble when I say, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Even my wife hates that. Can I ask you a question? Uh-oh. She's like, uh-oh. And my daughter's like, uh-oh. Can I ask you a question? Because <laughs> they know when I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to have a profound talk with you. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yes. I love, now, you've been around the world. Yes, ma'am. And you, now, tell me where you started from and how that whole journey started. Military. Okay. Some places I can't talk about, <laughs> I, I, you know, because I weren't supposed to be there. But oh. I've, I've had the uh, honor of, uh, I've been Korea, Japan, the Philippines, Okinawa, I've, uh, Russia. I went to Russia on an exchange program. Wow. I went to uh, Italy, Germany, uh, during that time the Czech Republic, you know, Bulgaria. I, I've, I never thought that me, the kid that's sitting out on the stoop in inner city D.C. would expand expand and see all these wonderful things, I, you know. And I, I really think people need to understand that. You know, I think people limit themselves. I know some people that have not been beyond Leon Valley. Mm -hmm. So how can you expound on anything? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big problem. Oh, yeah. Big, big problem. So I, I got to realize, you know, like, uh, well, the United States is the youngest country in the world. Huh. And uh, I hate to tell you, everybody don't agree with you. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't work what you're saying for everybody. Mm -hmm. And. Um, well, I do believe in travel education. At yes. one point, I wanted to put together the Jackie Jet Travel Education Network. Right. And I wanted to have the students come in and do like a six week series of personal development. Right. And if they did all their homework, I wanted to reward them to take them somewhere big right. like New York, LA. Right. Somewhere when you fly in, you see all those lights and you just right. realize, wow, there is more than my four streets that yes. I take so seriously of who likes me and who doesn't like me. And you realize how many people there are, it's yes. really going to be okay. I find that pretty interesting. I'm like, man, uh, I asked the kid, I said, one day I said, uh, oh, I see you got this uh, fubu thing on the back of your pants. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, why are you going to wear something you don't know about? Or why are you doing that? That's why I explain your martial art. That's why I explain to people, not just coming to me, but when you go and visit and, and sign up in these martial art places, ask them, is there a person that, that in case something happens to you, can I go to to continue my education? Mm. A lot of people don't ask that. Wow. And if the individual says just me, then you need to think about that. Yes. Because there's never one person end yes, all be all. Yes, and the beauty of Cook School is we all know each other's numbers around the world. So if my student is going somewhere, I get on the phone and let the people know that my student is coming there and do an introduction and things of that nature. That's and that wonderful. is required in Cook School. Really? Yes. Versus it, other martial well, arts. I don't. I don't think. That's done in a lot of martial arts. I, I, I can't speak for other ones, mm -hmm. but I can only speak for cooks. And how many languages do you speak? Oh, right now. Oh, goodness. <laughs> right now. He's still growing his languages. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife thinks I'm crazy. One day I'm speaking Japanese to her. Next day I'm speaking Korean. Then one day I'm speaking Chinese. <laughs> and one day I'm speaking French. Then now and then I'll throw in, where did you learn Spanish from? I said, hey, I just went down the street. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, I, I uh, some Russian, some, you know, because I, I made it a point. Mm -hmm. I made it a point that wherever I was to try to communicate with, with people. And when you do that, that opens so many doors for you. Yes. They really appreciate they it. They appreciate it, even though you may stumble through it. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 you, you can't be talking about my mother. Where you, you want something to eat, right? <laughs> so, exactly. No, no, no. This is how you say that. <laughs> you know? But I, to me, you need to learn a language. Mm -hmm. You need to learn a language. You know, you need to learn. You know, in the United States, I feel it's imperative that you learn Spanish. Oh, yes. Because that's our second language. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling people right now, our third language could be here soon, Chinese, Chinese or Korean. Mandarin. And Mandarin. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn because of the influences mm -hmm. here. So you need to learn a language. Plus, it, it makes you think. 
it, once you start learning languages, you can just about learn anything. Mm -hmm. Once you start learning a language, you can just about learn any language if you get into practice of learning languages. Right, because yes. it makes you think of different perspectives yes. and how to say something different. So when they come to train with you, they're learning the proper they, terms. So it is kind of like a well, language. Well, they're learning, they're learning Korean. They're learning the Korean terminology for training in martial arts. Okay. Now, believe it or not, a lot, if you go to Korea, a lot of times, a lot of Koreans do not know that. So you're like, you may say balding chagi, and they like look at you. That's a roundhouse kick. That just means top of foot to them. Oh. But it means roundhouse kick to us. The dialect. The, yeah, so, you know, not everybody in Japan and not everybody in Korea and not everybody in China practices martial arts. So you have terminology that's related to your aspect of training. Mm -hmm. And um, But right now, I've, I've got one kid I'm teaching Korean. And I got one kid I'm teaching Japanese. So wow. I'm typing out stuff. Here's your assignment. <laughs> Here's your, you know. So and I'm how old are these children? Uh, one is Zane. He's a Joganyam. He's a junior. Zane's about 12, 13. Okay. So he, he says he wants to be a big businessman in Japan. I said, oh, you do? So I started speaking Japanese. He was like, I said, well, you got to be prepared. Got to start somewhere. So we gave him his little. So he's getting another bunch of words today. Then I have another kid named Jaden I'm teaching Korean because uh, he was one of the first kids to say, I said, all right, when you're leaving, you say, oh, that means I'm leaving in Korean. And I say, oh, because I'm staying, that means I'll see you later. <laughs> and, and now he's like, so now I'm teaching him. Wow. So that like, is so awesome. I love how you just integrate everything in and it becomes relevant. Yes, everything and is relevant, relevant to me. My wife was like, why did you say that to them? I don't care if they're kids. Mm -hmm. I said, I've known kids there. Like I said, I was in the service, and I've seen kids their age carrying weapons. Oh. So, you know, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. and, They're sponges. You know, they're sponges. Give them good stuff. Yeah, give them good stuff because, you know, we're all human, and we will pick up the bad stuff before we pick up the good that stuff. That is so true. <laughs> but like I tell kids all the time, it's really easy to do wrong, but it takes a tremendous person to do right. That's right. Now tell me about the multi-generational uh, family that you've helped. Oh, the Medinas. <laughs> we had Grandpa, we had Grandma Medina. I love them to death. They knew me since Germany. But when was that? And that was back in 1993. Wow. They, they brought their son to me, Angel Medina. He trained with my son. Mm -hmm. They were, I think, out of all my students, those two rascals, and I had a Chris, <laughs> Chris Tillman. Them three rascals, Chris Tillman, Daniel Jolly Jr., and <laughs> Angel Medina were my most prolific junior students I've ever had. I've had some really outstanding juniors. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I got one guy named Trey Garcia. God bless him. He's a senior at Baylor. He was like the youngest person ever to get promoted to third degree in Kuksuwan. Wow. But as far as, you know, Athletic ability, sincereness, willing to go that extra mile. Those three rascals mm -hmm. set the bar for everybody else that I've trained, even adults. And I've had tremendous adults. Yeah. Tremendous adults. Uh, I have uh, Amado Garcia, my first uh, student in Germany when I came to Germany. Because Chief Master, I got a last minute assignment to Germany to integrate with the Army. And I was a little upset, and he was like, oh, you're going to go teaching. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> so, next thing you know, so next thing you know, I started a tremendous class in Germany. I just, I didn't know it was going to be like that. I had 80 adult students, and I had 100 and something kids, and I had a 200, 200 kid waiting list, just waiting for a kid to PCS and so a kid can get in. Wow. So I was busy, and when I went off to, you know, serve my, you know, do my duty, for that, those guys ran it. I had uh, Lawson Plummer, I had uh, Vernell Stevens, who I haven't heard from in God knows when. Uh, we had Keith Morris, uh, Vince Swergen, and uh, these were like the core group, mm -hmm. and Frankie Cade, mm -hmm. and... Uh, so you stay in touch with everybody on Facebook? Or? Oh no no no! I don't believe. I, no no we. I call. We oh, talk on the phone. Look at you. I don't believe. <laughs> Facebook is okay with me. Uh -huh. I tell people don't text me. Uh 
Uh -oh. I don't like that LOL. Like, <laughs> sir, I can't come to class right now. Hope you have a good day, LOL. And I'm like, that means lots of lies. <laughs> because oh. I, cause one time I, I drove by and this person told me. Uh -huh. that, and I'm like, okay, you told me you weren't feeling well, but I see you sitting out at the diner. So uh -oh. I'm like, LOL means lots of lies. Don't text me. Don't put LOL. L you, you, you talk to me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You tell me what's you really going me. on with you. <laughs> and now, now, Mr. Jolly, I said, just tell me the truth. What are you doing? Uh -huh. Go ahead and do what you got to do. And then just recently, I have a uh, young man by the name of Fontes Morrow, and I just promoted third degree. Had a tremendous time in uh, uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I have a friend there, uh, Colonel Beverly, who was a Tuskegee Airman, who, you know, and uh, Dr. Gail Haskell. And, you know, I do a lot of traveling and a lot of teaching and you know. But it my 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 wife, God bless her, she has to share me with everybody. Mm -hmm. She's a tremendous lady. Mm -hmm. We call her the little general. Oh, you cute. seen her. She's, good. she's adorable. She's <laughs> funny. She gets uh, like it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I love it. But, uh, you know, but uh, she knows. She knows. Uh -huh. Well, that's the thing is, is that you're dealing with so many age groups and mm -hmm. nationalities all over the world. Mm -hmm. What's easier for you to bring in a new student when they're young and impressionable or someone who's more motivated, like an older person like myself, who's at 15th annual 27th birthday? <laughs> yeah. is, it, is there hope for me to learn? Oh, yes. The problem, you know what? I love teaching kids. The problem in teaching adults, you have to change their mindset because once you get a certain age, you have your norms. Mm -hmm. And even, even, you know, you know, with your background and you, all the teaching you do and all the interviewing, you still have your preconceived notions. And I have to work through those preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know, I'm not. Well, I know you're a professional trainer, but we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I like your advice. I will remember that, but we don't do that. Just like I can't come in here and tell you, well, you're not supposed to kick like that. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> we're not doing what you're doing. You're doing what we're doing. Uh -huh. So, you know, you, you have to work through those things. Mm -hmm. You have to work through years and years of behavior that's become the norm for them. Where I look at them like, I don't, I don't think that's normal behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, and you work through that. Because you've seen so many other countries, yeah, I've seen so many things and stuff, and I just, I just look at people and I'm like, mm-hmm, 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 you know. And they're usually trying to justify why they do what do they it, do. And I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I, I'll say, <laughs> no, you know, you can't justify that. Yeah. You can't do that, you know, or you, why, why are you judging this person like that? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, Mr. John, they're getting away with, no, they're not getting away with anything because Sooner or later, I let you think you're getting away with stuff, mm -hmm. but I have a way of letting you know. See you later. No, you can't do that. You have to follow the rules. You know, I give you so much rope, and then I explain things to you. Exactly. And I give you ample opportunity by the little things I say. Mm -hmm. You know. I mm -hmm. think your instruction would be awesome, especially for small business owners, because so many times you get stuck in the business side, right. and then the little details will get away from you. Yes. And it's because there's not that structure in place. And right. when there's not that boss to answer to, right. things get piled and piled and piled until it yes. becomes overwhelming. Well, like I told people, I, I, I even have people with these mega schools, and I think it's awesome. But I'm like, can you tell me everybody's name? Hmm. No matter what, I can tell you every child's name. Aww. I can tell every adult's name. I'm talking about even adults that I met in Cook School outside of, you know, to have different schools. I can tell you their name. I can tell you where they practice at. I can tell you what wow. rank they are because that's important mm -hmm. to me. I always tell people, I'm, honest, I'm glad you got 300 students, but remember their name. Exactly. Don't remember the check number all the time. Just remember, and and you know what? That goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it I does. I learned that in the service. I learned that from a General Chung. General mm -hmm. Chung. He knew your name. He knew your kid's name. <laughs> he, you know, he, he that that made an awesome impression on me. 
Hey, Sean, like he saw me in Germany. Sean, what are you doing over here with the army? And how's little Daniel doing? Aww. And this and that and that. And the people are like, God, the general's talking to Sean Jolly like that. But I was one of his people, and he never, I, he just amazed me. That is amazing. So you don't take any supplements for your memory. It's just pure motivation. <laughs> you know what? The more you study, the better your memory. Mm. You know, Grandmaster teaches us special exercises for memory and things and little, you know, key breathing and different sounds and tonal things that the monks do to enhance memory and health and things of that nature. But I noticed the more I, the more I read, the more I study things, the more I deal with people, the better my brain. So that's your secret to youthfulness, is your ability to read and learn. Oh, and exercise, and exercise, Lots of and, exercise. and don't eat too much of everything. <laughs> yeah. Moderation yeah, is key. Yeah, it is key. I, I, I noticed I, I had to do Chacho's patrol. You know I'm right behind Chacho's. I do. So I had to, I was noticing, I'm like, I'm working these students to death, and they're running over to Chacho. Hmm. So one dad said, I know you're going over to Chacho's, <laughs> and I'll be doing Chacho's patrol when I get out there this time, and I'll drive around Chacho's. Hmm. You're not supposed to be in there doing that. That's you know, right. And they're like, uh -oh. and one guy thought I was playing, what are you doing? As <laughs> <laughs> they're putting the, those thoughts into their mouth. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll work it off. Have a good time. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's oh, going to hurt already. It's going to hurt already. Gonna, hurt already. But, but, so tell so what the monks, what did the monks teach you? Because I know oh, you were goodness, telling me about I went, the monks. I, I went one time with the monks, I went with Grandmaster and them, and I watched. Uh, it was just interesting, the discipline. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's, <laughs> Nothing like you had never ever not, seen that, in the military. That's, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I noticed um, they wake, the kids and stuff, they wake up at four. In the morning. In the morning, uh, wow. the gong and stuff goes off. Uh, the kids are running around doing chores. Not all monks practice martial arts. I saw one thing interesting. Uh, one time I was uh, at this temple in Tawada, Japan, and they had the kids there. and these, They had these little things out of the ground, and this monk was sitting there, and uh, the kids were in a full split, and all of them were, and they, did, they were not moving. They were balancing on there, and he was just sitting there. And when the kid moved, pow! <gasps> and I was like, wow. That's not, intense. I'm like, not me, <laughs> you know, me, you can't get a kid to hold their hand up like three <laughs> minutes in class and these kids are, you, wow. know, you know, but not all, you know, like I said, not all monks practice martial arts either. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I noticed the discipline, I noticed the uh, piety, I noticed the uh, sense of purpose. Uh, and these children are the children that they've brought in they off brought the street. They brought a lot of them. It, Either the parents will bring them to them, or they bring them off the street. Wow! Where when the monk goes around and collect, you know, for their arms, the bit, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of times they bring these kids off the street. And a lot of times these kids are waiting just outside of the monastery. Really? So it's pretty interesting. That is super interesting. Now tell me about the hundred and eight stairs. Okay, we do this form called Pekpagi Young on a hundred and eight torments of life. So I'm like, okay, that's great. I, I suffer that every day from a the time. There's only 108 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's got to be double for me sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but I noticed, you know, when we went to the monastery, it was 108 steps. Mm. And they were telling me monks walk those 108 steps 108 times. And that's in Japan? No, that was in Korea. Korea. And uh, in Japan, the same thing was 108 steps. Really? Yes. Hmm. And they're pretty steep. Yes, <laughs> yes, and and you know what? That's to depict that life is pretty steep. Mm. Life is pretty steep. A lot of people, well, I know life. No, 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 you don't. You practice at life. That's what people understand. You're practicing at life, oh, just I like love you're that. practicing at martial arts. You're practicing at life. You should be practicing to get better. Mm -hmm. We're not always going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Even with all my discipline, I have Kodak moments now and then. I'm like, oh, this, 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 this not supposed to be happening. But, <laughs> you know, but you practice at life. And the only thing you ever master, whether it's martial arts, whether it's dance, whether it's gym, 
and whether it's learning is the art of sticking with it. Mm. That's the only thing people have to realize. That's what you're mastering. That's what you truly mastered. You, to get to your position, your husband's position, my wife's position, my position, is the art of sticking with it. Mm. And when you master that, then you're, you're, it's called good practice at life. Mm. That is so interesting. And if you are ever thinking about taking martial arts, you definitely have to look up Mr. Dan Jolly right here behind Chachos at Bandera and Paws. I, I mean, I'm so inspired. I'm ready to rush my baby over there, and I want to join your class. Well, we have I'm a lot gonna... of ladies. They are something else. I'm really? Like, and you, so can... you do, like, self-defense as well? Oh, yes. I have a class during the day I'm teaching now. It's called Military Combatives. And what it is is I... I teach you, you know, boxing, kicking, knife fighting, grappling, you know, things of that nature. But I still include the meditation and all that stuff in there. And what time do you teach that? I'm teaching that, uh, I usually teach that on Tuesdays and Thursdays okay. at 11 o'clock. So I'm going to, I'm really going to push, uh, I want to push that program, really. And it's called? Uh, I just call it Military Combatives and Street Awareness. Military combat. So it doesn't sound like a lady would be like, oh, let me learn military combatives, but it oh, can really help no, us ladies. No. Yes, it can. I had a young lady, uh, God bless her, named Leela. She's wonderful. She's second degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's right now, I'm so proud of her. She has a, uh, she's cooking in Australia. Mm. Went to a New York cooking school. And these guys were harassing her. And bless her heart. No, oh, she, she did a lot of damage. Ah! you know, from that class. And she's furious and the guys do not like tussling because her dad's a doctor, he's in my class, and they're just rough and tumble people. They're wonderful people though. Mm -hmm. And Leela, they're like, no, 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 don't practice with Leela. Don't practice with Leela, because <laughs> Leela does not play. But it's a really, and, I, and I'm one of those guys, I'm very, uh, I just don't have you out there mindlessly kicking and punching. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of classes where, oh, let me teach you self-defense and mindlessly kicking and punch. You know, there's a, there's a strategy to everything. Mm -hmm. There's a thought process to everything. I'm like, no, you punch like this. You're a lady. No, you fight outside the individual strength. No, you, you know, you have to be aware. So this is what I want you to do when you go out. I want you to make sure that three, three people know that you went out to this place and you should be back at this time. Oh, wow. If you don't hear that, then... You know, you know, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. When those people don't hear from you, they should be ringing the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know that sounds silly, but hey, no. that, that's, uh, you know, why, why are you carrying all these things? Why, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, did you look under your car when mm -hmm. you, when you, cause I, I was teaching a class in Houston and the lady was just sitting in her car. Mm. She was doing her money like this. This was mm. at night and she didn't even hear me. Really? And I said, I said, <gasps> I said, you see, I said, all I had to do was punch my fist through the window. Oh. I said, and I could have told you, move over, drive off with your car. You do not do that. Exactly. You do not. And she was in shock. Yes. But she put it all on, you know, she said, Master Jolly did a really neat thing with me. He explained, and I didn't even know he was there. I said, ma'am, I watched you for five minutes. Oh. I said, you counted out $400. Oh. Wow, that's terrifying. But I'm just telling you, that's how that goes. You don't know, you don't know mm. who's watching what, who's who's picking up your habits, who's doing whatever. And I explain that in all my classes. Man, well, you know, uh, last year we were unfortunately visited by some crime very close to us at the Op Schnabel Park, where uh -huh. that young girl had her earphones in and. That person uh, mm -hmm. attacked her, and, and he did kill her. Mm -hmm. And I know um, there was a big, you know, call out for more classes like yours. So it's mm -hmm. so great to know that you are offering that every Tuesday and Thursday at yes. 11 a.m. Yes. It's called Military Combatives. Yes, and street awareness. And street awareness, because even uh, I read years ago at the San Antonio Community College. Mm -hmm. um, this was years ago, though. But there was some group of guys that they were making it a habit of laying on the pavement underneath the vehicles. Oh, yes. Uh, waiting for the girls. They, they can pull, uh, they, uh, they had a young lady raped in California. They didn't even know, in the parking lot, they just pulled her up under the car. Oh. 
So yeah. you have to, you know, don't just aim, like I told, I call it blissfully ignorant. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm always like, I can tell you where the exits are, I can tell you this is that. I look at everywhere I go, my wife said, what are you looking at? I'm like, well. Stay alert and aware. And I don't sit with my back to the window. I want to see who's coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are those things that I really have these discussions about. Well, I am super duper uber inspired by you, and I am dying to race over and get me and my son in there. My husband's always working for a baby 24 7. <laughs> Sorry, puppy. But we'll teach you what we learn from Mr. Jolly. <laughs> but if you are looking for a great program for yourself, for your children, you know, even for your mom or dad, because he does work with people all the way up to 70, and I'm sure even higher if they came in and oh, wanted yes. to learn. It's great for their mental clarity, their balance, their control. Just so many awesome things you can um, come and learn off of Master Jolly at Cook Soul One right here behind Chachos in our beautiful Leon Valley at Bandera and Paz. So make sure that you look for them on Facebook because you are on Facebook even oh, though yes. you don't do it a lot. I don't. I don't. Is do your it. wife you, in charge of that part? Well, you can type my name and you'll see my son and then you'll see me. And Aww. You know, I love my son. To death. He's, I love he's something it. else. He's a... Uh, can I... Little shout out to him. Of uh, course. Uh, he's just opened a school in Austin. <gasps> Congratulations! Uh, uh, yeah, and he's the uh, he fights uh, mixed martial arts as well as teach Kuk Suwan, and he's the light heavyweight Gold Coast mixed martial arts uh, fighting champion. So that's exciting. He's a good guy. And then, real quick, tell me what's your next upcoming event? Oh yes, I, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, I'm going to the Kuk Suwan tournament in October. Uh, it's uh, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Cook Suwon wow. being in the United States, and I'm, I got all, I got friends coming from Scotland and England, wow. and the Netherlands. They even got Cook Suwon in Australia. I got some people visiting me a, count, a week before the tournament that's coming over. They like to come down, and Jolly takes them around. Oh. The Riverwalk is famous, people. Yes. We kind of take it for granted, <laughs> but when the first thing they say, let's go to the Riverwalk. That's I'm like, right. <laughs> that's right. Well, September will be a cooler month than August. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so we'll be down in October. Okay, October. Around. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for coming in, and thank you for logging on. Don't forget to look up Muster Jolly at his Cook Soul One studio here in beautiful Leon Valley. And until next time, bye. Thank you. <laughs>